where, just to introduce us, um, Urban is the coaching um, coordinator. He's kindly helped set this up or, or set it up. Um, he's asked myself and, and John, who did it last year, um, to take the lead. Um, I've, I guess I've, I've been asked because I had a, had a lucky first marathon. And um, as you'll see later on, it's been downhill since then. So do what I say, not what I do. John's had got a lot of marathons under his belt. Um, he's, as you'll see, he's a, a slightly different viewpoint from me. Greg has got loads of marathons under his belt. They're all high performance, high mileage, and yet another viewpoint, okay? And what you've got to do is work out which viewpoint is closely fits you, um, and maybe there's, a, there's another viewpoint. You should take the best from each of us. But none of, none of us really disagree on any points. I mean, we all agree, basically, the more miles you do that are decent, the better you will, you will get, okay? So there's no disagreement among us about that, uh, with some caveats. The difference is that John and I will never get injured running hardly because we don't run enough. And that's because we've, and that's to our detriment. Greg, on the other hand, runs a lot. In high mileage, obviously he'll get maximum output from that maximum performance, but the negative side of that, he will get injured more often. So you've got to trade off those two things. Now, what we want to do, we want to know who we're talking to. So, if I can, yeah. so, who does less than three runs per week? At the moment, because yeah. I have an injury. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> Who does three to four? Okay, anyone more than four? Okay, there you go. So I'm just roughly thinking it's going to be something like that. Is that right? Yeah? So that's, that's, uh, that's the audience runs per week. So we're sort of 5%. 75% and 20%. Okay, which is exactly what we expect. We expect most of you to be three to four runs per week. Okay, miles per week. Less than 30. Okay, okay. Between 30 and 50. Okay. And bigger than 50. Right, so you don't count as an audience, Greg. <laughs> so, um, let me, is that about right? So about 33, no, sorry, I bugger that up. 33, 66, yeah, most of you were less than 30, yeah? Okay, now that is a little bit surprising, seeing as you're marathon training, presumably. I guess that's the first question to ask. Who is training for a marathon for this spring? Hands up, well, let me put hands up, let's see them, let's see them. Okay, so um, you other guys, you've got, you haven't got a plan when you're, when you're gonna do it, you're just thinking about it, is that right? Of course, cool. well that's the most important one that we haven't got. That's pretty much last year where everyone in the room is doing a spring marathon, <laughs> pretty much. So about 50-50, planning and are doing it. Okay, how many people have been running for less than five years in terms of quite regularly? Less than five years, not okay. Come in, come in. Uh, more than, between five and 10 years? And, and bigger than 10 years, more than 10 years. Okay, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. No, come in. Sorry. Is it, is it problems with tubes at the moment, or is it? No, well, Sorry, no, no, sorry, no, no problem, thanks for trying. Come in, come in. Okay, we're talking about, we're just doing the intro. I'm trying to understand who we're talking to. Um, so far we've gathered that most people are running three to four times a week, which is what we expect. But I've sort of mucked this up. But a little bit surprising, two thirds of people are actually running less than 30 miles a week. So then we thought, well, hang on, who's actually doing who's actually doing a spring marathon? And it turns out that half the people here actually 
aren't plan haven't got a firm plan for this spring. They're just here to learn and thinking about it in the future, which is a little bit different to last year. We're talking about running age. Um, how many years you've been running regularly? Let's just do that again with new people, with everyone. Right, who's been running less than five years? Ten. Okay, who's been running between five and ten years? Okay, and more than ten years? Okay, so let's see if we get this right this time. So again, it was 33% five to ten years and 60% less than five years. So obviously, that's the expected audience beginners, relative beginners. Of those people who are training for the marathon, how many of you have, on your long runs, have reached less than 10? You haven't got past 10 miles. <coughs> of those who are doing a spring marathon, nobody. Who has got between 10 and 15? Who's got more than 15? Okay. Greg, you're keeping your hand up. <laughs> you're not allowed to put that. <laughs> Exactly. So I'd say that was 50-50. Okay. Well, that's about right. I mean, if, if those, if, I'm glad that no one's saying they're doing less, they've done less than 10 miles, because I mean, that would have been worrying. So that's, that's good news. Okay. Right. So now we know who you are, you can get cracking. Those of you who just come in, if anyone's got a Dell Power Lead, Please, please come up. Okay. Um, first, the first two minutes of this presentation is going to be all about trying to get you not to do a marathon. Okay. Why? Because if you do a marathon and you're not prepared, you'll injure yourself, or you'll stop running completely because you, you've hated you hate it so much, or you'll never do a marathon again. Okay. So the worst thing you can do is so I'm going to do a marathon because all my mates talk about it and I'd love to do a marathon not really think about what it means and go off and do it without being prepared okay I am absolutely shattered today and I'd rather be asleep than here because of training okay and that's how you sort of should be feeling all the time if you're doing a marathon <laughs> properly now yeah you can do a fun you can do a fun run and um, you know, wear Ryan Rhinoceros costume. But well, I'm assuming your club runners, you all want to do, you know, a decent time for, for you to yourself. Whether that's three hours, four hours or five hours, it's a decent time for yourself, okay? So I'm assuming you want to do, you're here because you want to learn and you want to do a decent time, okay? So, in an average year, say 1,500 people, um, sorry, in an average year, more people do London Marathon than run the 1,500 metres, okay? And people, you, you know, people train properly for 1,500 metres. It's quite an easy distance to train for, you can over distance, etc. But we'll see that most people actually don't train properly for the marathon. So this is a graph. Each dot represents a serpy, okay? Now, on this axis, you've got your age-graded <laughs> performance. Uh, for the marathon. On this axis, you've got the age graded performance for all the other club championships. Okay, now, if you club championships, there are nine club championships in, in the Serpentine calendar, yeah, from 1k to a marathon. Um, what we're doing here is seeing if people perform <coughs> better or worse than a marathon. Okay, there's the sort of neutral line. If you, if you perform the same between your marathon and your other distances, you'll be on the red line. You can see that everybody, just about, 90% of people underperform the marathon, okay? So in other words, their marathon performance is less than what they can do in all their other distances. So if you train properly, you should be getting the same age, group, age, age grade as your 1K, 3K, 5K, 10K, half marathon, etc. But they're not, yeah? They're underperforming. 70% of them underperformed. In fact, women do better. So why is the marathon different? Well, you've probably heard all about you know, glycogen stores and hitting the wall. So a marathon is the only sort of normal distance where you don't have enough glycogen to finish it. You've got enough energy, you've got enough fat stores, so you can walk it. 
but you don't have enough energy to um, to do it without heating, without having to use your fat stores. So there's a potential if you go up too fast of heating a wall, and which can just take you out in an, it can drop you in an instant, absolutely just drop you. Also, the time it takes to, to run it, transferring that to training, uh, it's got implications for, for injury. So you can, you've, you're going to get foot damage, leg damage, training. Um, you've got the time taken, you've got you have to think about nutrition and the other end of it, the, the toilet needs. There's also motivation problem. I have a huge problem with motivation. My, my motivation. So that's something you've got to find your own, um, you know, balance with. Guys, if you're not interested, I am. Sorry, I'm just so hungry. I was going to eat that. Okay, okay. For those who've just arrived, okay, feel free to come up whenever you like. Grab a biscuit. Grab a cup of tea, coffee, because we don't want you dropping down. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So you need to adapt to fat burning. You need to practice taking the gel as nutrition. You need to work out which shoes are best for you. Um, you need to work out how you can go for two hours, three hours, four hours without a toilet stop when you might suffer from, to from runner's trots anyway. Um, and you need to you have to get a group together maybe to train with. Because you can't overtrain on the marathon. You can't do 30 miles in training or part of Greg. Um, you know, if you do a half marathon, you can run 15 miles. If you do 5k, you can train by doing 10k or 10 miles. You can't do that with a marathon because you just hurt yourself. So you need a different strategy. So we, we've done this. So we know that, you know, you basically are target audience. You're sort of beginners, in less than five years running age, three to four times a week. Uh, most of you run less than 30 miles a week, which is a little bit worrying, but that's because some of you aren't even training for the marathon at the moment, um, and those that are, but those that are seem to be doing, their long runs seem to be getting to the right point, sort of around 10, 15 at the moment, which is good. So, you know, do you want to be doing this now? Are you motivated? You know, if you're not motivated, don't even try it. There's plenty of times to do a marathon later on in your life, um, and in fact, you'll be better at it as you get older. So if you're 25 and you're running with a marathon, but you haven't done your best 5Ks or 10Ks, maybe you should just stick to getting, getting those sorted out first. We don't want you to suffer this time and never want to do it again. John. Target setting. Okay, those of you who are planning a spring marathon this year, how many of you actually got a target time in mind? Is that everybody? Is there anyone who hasn't got a target time in mind? It's sort of like a couple of half hands there. Okay, and how, re how have you planned your targets? How realistic are they? Anybody? How have you thought that's what you're going to go for and what basis have you got to back it up with? People that I run with, the kind of time that they do. Okay. People that I know I can run through. What about the times you've done yourself? Yeah, and that, looking at those things. Okay. Yeah, just comparing half marathon times and then doubling up and adding on extra for the longer distance and How much have you dragged on? Good. You're about to find out. Um, I can make this work. <laughs>